Hi everybody, I'm Sarah. And I'm Rebecca. And this is our first episode of Split Screen. So Split Screen is a segment that we are going to do periodically in which Sarah and I go and watch a movie or a TV show based off a book or a graphic novel. One of us will go in having read the source material and the other one will go in totally blind. So today we're talking about the graphic novel Coldest City, which has recently been adapted into a movie called Atomic Blonde, which many of you might not actually know was based on a graphic novel. I Did had you know no that? idea, no, until yeah. you told me. I would actually like to start with your overall impression of the film because I do believe that I had a very different impression going in. So to start with, I have read the source material and Rebecca has not. Nope. I knew nothing. I knew what was in the trailer and it was very vague. Mm -hmm. So go right into it. What were your impressions not knowing anything about the source material? I was very confused for a lot of it. It was a little confusing. Um, it was cool to see Charlie Theron like beat people up to like this cool 80s fucking music. The soundtrack was the fantastic. So good. Oh, I want to party to that soundtrack. Like, I know. That's my new party. Or beat sound. men with like yeah. a hot plate to it. Yeah. So I guess like my overall impression was that I found it entertaining and I got enjoyment from watching it. But I found like all of the, how thick they tried to make the plot just made it more confusing. And I think it would have benefited from like having a simpler plot maybe. So overall you liked the look of it. I loved the appearance of it. Yeah. But you, the plot of it, you found to be the biggest flaw. Okay. So going into it, the only, and I mean only thing that it took from this book was the plot. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm not joking. <laughs> the plot of this book is like a really great more traditional British spy story, but really well done. It's like in the vein of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, but in the movie it became very quickly clear to me that the directors, writers had a vision, whoever it was, maybe the director, had a vision and they used the story to display their vision. Great action, great action. Which this was, this was yeah, just had. The action yeah. was great. Real quick, um, we won't get spoiled, we will get into spoilers later, but we will warn you ahead of time and let you know where to skip to. We will be getting into the plot a little bit, so if you wanna go into Atomic Blonde knowing absolutely nothing, then I wouldn't recommend watching this video. Yeah. So overall, my feeling about this book, it's, almost noir. It's black and white. It's very dramatic. It's very stark. It is not fantastical. It is not fashionable. This was a very dramatic interpersonal spy drama. And I would actually like to talk for a moment. This is not a spoiler, but I'm going to find for you. So I would like to show you this scene. It is not a spoiler, but I would just, you probably can't read this from here. But here's two pages here, and here's one page here. This is the only action scene really? in the story. <laughs> Punching, flipping, kicking, there are three pages. And that is not an exaggeration, it's not even the full three pages. This is surprising because that's a huge part of the movie. There are a lot of well choreographed, and by that I mean natural looking fight scenes. The, fi the, the fight choreography, everything, the fight scenes in Atomic Blonde, fantastic. They're, like, I am a fan. They're fucking brutal though, so if you're yes. not a fan of violence. Violent, it's for sure. Super violent, like it's a very violent movie. But I like, I don't like highly choreographed fight scenes because most of the time I find them obviously choreographed. In Atomic Blonde, I liked how it was like, they got tired when they'd been fighting for a long time. They felt their yeah. injuries. Oh, that's it was, totally it true. It felt real. It wasn't like this kung fu movie where people can get beat a bunch of times in the ribs and then they just stand up and they're perfectly fine. Because I'm sorry, that doesn't happen. There is fantastic action. And overall, my feelings about the movie, very fashionable and very just so cool. Like the it's essence cool of cool. Yeah. <laughs> like you watch it and you're just thinking this movie, I feel cooler 
while I'm watching this movie. Especially as a woman. We don't get a lot of beat yeah, up, that's like, true. badass spies. Do you think of Charlize Theron's character? I wish she had a bit more of a personality. She's obviously a badass, but she's a badass because she's, like, kicking or she's, like, punching guys in the nuts a lot. Yes. There are a lot of nut shots, and not just by women in this movie. I noticed no. that a lot. And you know what? That's realistic. I did find her character kind of dull. It wasn't her fault, um, Charlize Theron. Like, it wasn't... She was awesome, I found her but... character to be bland but also bitchy. In the graphic novel, the character of Lorraine is like professional to a T. She is not bitchy. Okay. She is only, she is sassy in that I mean this takes place in 1989, remember. This was a slightly different time as far as what was socially acceptable to say. Yeah. And there are characters in this novel who straight up tell her like I'm not going to take orders from a woman. Ugh. And she responds by saying, like, fuck you, essentially. <laughs> That's not an exact quote. But she is exactly what she needs to be for a woman in this type of business in 1989. And it is perfect. How did you feel about her in the movie then? There were a lot of moments where she said things like, I wish I'd known I would have worn a different outfit. Mm, sassy. Something yeah. like that. But sassy and like a, I'm going to wear the right outfit for my spy action. And that is not Lorraine from this novel. And I had just spent a little while with this Lorraine where she was, she does not wear cool clothes. She is not blonde. She wears her hair in a bun. She wears her 80s businesswoman like pencil skirt, not form fitting, very short heels. And it's not sexy and it's not fashionable because that's not what a spy would wear. She blends in and she is just an every woman. Do you think the movie would have been better if they stuck to that? No. Okay. That's hard, like, to admit that sometimes. Yes. That it's better that they change the character. So Especially when you love the character in the... Or it likes them. Or if you... Back. So, these are very different stories to me. If you were going to make this exact story, you need to do it in a totally different way. The This movie, Atomic Blonde, was like a dance party from 1989. It was cool, and it made you feel great, and you were, like, fighting, and it was fun. That's not really what this book is. And this book has a great story. That being said, they cut some cool parts out of this story in order to replace them with very intense fight scenes. Mm -hmm. Which the fight scenes and the action were great, and I would not have liked this movie the same if it weren't for them. And I think it was a better movie for it. But I think the story is stronger here. Okay. That's my feeling. I would like to talk about spoilers. Spoilers, if you don't want to be spoiled, if you're going to read this, or if you're going to watch Atomic Blonde, skip to whatever time we put on the screen right now. I'd like to start with some differences in characters. Let's start with James McAvoy. Okay, James McAvoy played Percival? Percival. Percival. David Percival. He was wonderful, by the way, the actor. He, I, he I, I always liked James McAvoy. Yeah, right? Describe how James McAvoy was introduced. I feel like he knows what he's doing, but he wants to come off as being like a kind of rogue person while not actually being that. The first scene you see him in, it's like an underground party. He's like in a fur coat. He's like kind of a ringleader type. Mm -hmm. um, that scene was entirely fabricated. That's not from the novel at all. In the novel, he looks like this. Oh my God, he looks so old. He is an old man with a mustache. <gasps> what? And then they made him James McAvoy. And then they were like, but we could get James McAvoy. We could get James McAvoy. And his character was really fun and inspired in the movie. In the book, again, he was what he needed to be in this, which was a spy, a traditional spy, which is a slightly overweight, jowly British man with a mustache and a receding hairline. And one of the points in the movie was, why has Percival not returned to England? Why is he staying in Berlin? And to that, they made some vague mention of him going native. They're like, really positively feral. I remember because I already knew the story. Okay, I, yeah. I know yeah, it was I remember confusing. This at all. <laughs> as, as a blind film viewer, I knew no, I, I didn't retain this information. In 
the book, he's a straight up misogynist. And he is not returning to England because he doesn't like the fact that the Prime Minister is now Margaret Thatcher. Oh. The main character, Lorraine, finds this out when he says some, I'll, I'll quote, finds this out when he says, I may not be declared here, but I am still head of this station and I will not be lectured by a bloody woman. And then she says, your file says you haven't returned to England not once in 10 years. That's why, isn't it? They mention Margaret Thatcher okay. and it's an issue. Wow, that's like, I liked how in the movie you kind of like never know if you should trust Percival, but they made him likable. And I feel like if they had kept that in, I would have hated him immediately. For, like, first of all, a lot of people are unlikable in this book. Yeah. Maybe it's because he's like James McAvoy that I was like, you're likable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like kind of like silly. He's fun, cute. He's, he's muscular. Cute. He's gray. But he's like muscular in that like way that I like. In the like kind of stocky, kind of rough. Kinda yeah. Rough. yeah. Okay. <sighs> Let's talk about Delphine. So what do you think of her and her character and her role? I was very confused by her character and her role. I like never knew if I was supposed to like her or hate her. But by the end, I was like kind of confused. Like, is she naive? Was she like kind yeah. of like this naive, flighty person who, okay. So that's like kind of what I got out of her by the end. I was very mad that she died. Um, yeah. Maybe because of the bury your gaze trope. Not that she's ever like identified in any sexuality, but she does sleep with Charlie Siren. And I didn't like that. It yes. almost ruined the movie for me. I don't like when you kill women who have sex with other women. It's not unique or cool or original anymore. It's yeah. just annoying and it pisses yeah. me off. Let's talk about Delphine in the novel. In the novel, Delphine's name is Pierre. Okay. Delphine is a man. Oh, they made Delphine a man. And no lie, Lorraine is the only female character in this book. Oh, I mean, like, there aren't a lot of female characters in the movie. What I will say is there is no sex scene in this novel. There is a seduction scene in which Lorraine corners Pierre, steals his gun, and says, like, what are you trying? Why are you following me? What is this shit? They added the sex scene and the relationship Oh. And the fact that Delphine was a woman. I feel like they did add the fact that she was a woman because there were no other really yes, female characters. But was I, that the right choice um, for that character? Not not the choice to make more female characters, because I get that and I, I understand. But was was Pierre the right choice? Um, I definitely feel like it she becomes more of like a common trope by making her a woman. Yes. Having like a naive flighty man would have been a little bit more interesting. Here's, here's what upsets me. Pierre, not naive. Oh no. Pierre, so they made her not naive. flighty. Oh, okay, so they changed her to woman and it made her naive yes. and kind of dumb. Remember how she said, meet me at this club that I work at? Uh huh. Pierre owns that club. Pierre is a owner and but a he's like a, a businessman. Yeah. Oh, and that's so annoying. He's, he doesn't have some shitty apartment where he works as a bartender. He owns a restaurant. He is well to do. And that's what upset me about that. Oh, that's the sucks. fact that they I don't mind making characters female. Pierre but becomes keep the, Delphine. Keep the power yes. that the character has. Don't say Pierre's now gonna be a woman, so let's make her a bartender or whatever. And kinda like dumb. She's not dumb. She but was she's she was just like, oh, maybe I'm a poet. She became a little bit manic pixie dream girl to me at that point. That's that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. That's super frustrating that they couldn't make this woman like an owner of a club and not yeah. a fucking moron. Yeah. Not she's more, I'm being harsh on that. Like, but, but all of the, all of her, all of her lines were things like, I wish I was a rock I star was a or a poet. poet. Yeah. Not and like, like Lorraine tells her like, you need to get out of here. What are you fucking dumb? And she's like, okay. And then she doesn't leave and then she dies. Like, yeah. Yeah. Pierre does die. But not but because of his own stupidity or there's that <laughs> whole scene isn't there it's just you find him dead and and that whole character was just portrayed very differently he was just kind of cocksure i would I guess i would say he like owned a club he would say things like meet me here you know tomorrow night so he was like demanding not like would you please meet me here yeah he was like, meet me here yeah ah that's so stupid other differences i'm gonna jump ahead for a minute jump ahead jump wherever you want 
Russian American what did, what did you feel about the double triple agent play? I don't did understand you, it at all. Did you see it coming? Or were you just like, whatever, this is all just throwing shit at me? What was it? I, it felt like a shit was being thrown at me. I still don't really understand what happened. I understand that Lorraine um, tricked a lot of people. Not, what was the spy's name they were trying to find? Satchel. 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 By the way, in the book, Stoshel. Stoshel. Why would you trip me up like this? Satchel. <laughs> Satchel. In the, like, in why the movie, it was Satchel. That? In the book, it was Stoshel. You can say Stoshel. What's the difference? I don't understand. It's not that big a deal. Just say fucking Stoshel. Yeah, I know. So confused. A lot of it is like trying to find Satchel and they're a double agent. I didn't think it was her for a while. She definitely played the like tough badass, but like, I'm a victim really well. Uh, yeah. Which was cool. So I definitely yeah. didn't like see that coming, but then I didn't really understand the very end when she was like, I'm Russian. And then she was like, no, I'm not. Everyone's dead. Like I didn't. And then like she was with John Goodman at the end. I didn't understand. So in the book, I'm also dumb. That's okay. <laughs> I, that's, I was, this was a confusing book. Yeah. So in the book, she's just Russian. In the book, the only conclusion you get is that she has a CCCP, like, uh, file or like a passport and that she then meets the, the Russian guy who wasn't, he was actually Polish. He was, I know, I'm confused too. You gotta read the second one. <laughs> I, Fill me in because there is another graphic novel. We don't know there if there's gonna be another movie, one. but um, the American thing that didn't happen in this book. Maybe that's a be, sequel thing. Yeah, I didn't understand. I also didn't realize she's supposed to be British at first, and I don't know if this was Charlize Theron in her accent. It like, was bad. She's talking in the beginning because she's being interviewed, and I did not hear British for a while. Her her accent was bad. At the end of this book. I definitely felt like she was a British agent mm -hmm. who was doubling for the Russians. Not that she was Russian. I still assumed that she yeah. was British. Yeah, I at no point thought she was Russian. Although she had that like dark wig on at the end that made her look a little more. But then it was a so, wig. So oh, let's talk about the wig for a quick second. Okay. Here's her in the wig. So she put a blonde wig on at the end? <laughs> she, the blonde hair with the bangs <laughs> is the wig. That's her wig. Her hair for the rest of the book looks like this. Like her wig at the end. It's short and it's, she has short brown hair. And then just at the end, she wears a blonde wig with blunt bangs. And it's, it's the complete reverse of the movie, which is fine. Blonde is very catchy on film. And if they wanted that stark kind of desaturated look. I had found it curious that she had such dark blonde hair because throughout the movie she's like kind of trying to hide a lot of the times and I'm like, girl, your fucking hair makes you stand out so much. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not a natural blonde look. It looks great, but it's not like yeah. what you naturally just look like. Yeah. Her entire look, honestly. The clothes, the chained leather boots and the like bright sweaters and the dramatic jackets. Let's talk for a minute about the Icemen. You don't know what the fuck Icemen are because They're they excellent. cut it out of the movie. Okay. This whole movie, there was a list. Uh-huh, yes. You remember the list? The list, yeah. There is a list in the book, but the twist at the end is that the list doesn't really exist. No one ever sees the list. It's not it's hidden like, in a watch. It's like a secret. No, there was no fucking watch. Huh. And the list was just a ruse to make people think that's why someone was going there. Icemen. Icemen are a racket of assassins. And Lorraine frames the whole situation of what everyone else is doing as a con where double agents in... Berlin are forming an assassin ring. And that sounds crazy, but it makes so much sense in the book. Sounds more interesting than a list, honestly. The list, the the list, list is here, but it doesn't yeah. exist and it's a ruse. And the ice ring made everything interesting because this whole book, I was thinking like, oh, who the fuck is part of the ice man? And who the fuck is an ice man? Who's an assassin? Who's a double agent? Who's just trying to make a buck as an assassin? 
And in the end, it was just Lorraine fucking trolling everybody. And the list didn't exist, the Iceman didn't exist, it was all fucking Lorraine. It was crazy. The opening scene. She has some photographs, gas coin. It starts the movie by showing photos of her with glass coin. And they're like hugging and she's, and part of the raw element of the bathtub scene is her looking at photos with what appear to be a lover who is Gascoigne. Mm -hmm. And when they announce to her that Gascoigne is dead, they say, did you know him? And she says enough to say hello. And then it cuts to her looking at the photos of them being very huggy and obviously romantically involved. She had no connection to Gascoigne. Oh no, in the book. That was entirely fabricated for the movie. Huh. I wonder why they threw that in there. I don't feel like it really added anything. Maybe it makes her relatable or like it makes you sympathize with that her. That was a the bit. first moment, it was very early on in the movie, that made me think she's a woman, so they have to add emotionality. I thought they did it so we didn't suspect her in being the bad guy at the end or like not a hero but it, okay but the parts that they did to keep her from appearing as a bad guy was just the stuff she was telling to the higher-ups when she was in that interrogation okay yeah you're right yeah. so why would like we get backstory where she was like lovey-dovey with gas she really does have like emotional connections okay in this book the story, the backstory that we get, everything that happens in Berlin is based on what she is telling the men in the interrogation. Mm -hmm. And it's not all true. Mm -hmm. And you find that out as you go along that she is fabricating that. And that that is not necessarily what's happening. And I don't think that's how it was framed in the movie. She was the one who killed Percival, James McAvoy. Yes. But in this book, she, she was like, not. She witnessed it and she was terrified and hiding in the shadows, but then it comes out that she was really she was the, the one, one who killed him. Where in the movie they portray it that she even tells them that she's the one yes. who killed him. But also, she's like just saying for the he's record, the, yeah, the traitor. Pierre slash Delphine was not killed by Percival. Oh, who killed her? Uh him. Who <laughs> killed him? Um, it was the the Russians. Okay. The Russians killed him. Why? It's a damn good question. We don't fucking know. This is a very complicated It's so story. fucking it's <laughs> Like you should reread that before you read the sequel if you decide it so you don't fuck it up. I've already reread parts of it and I'm still confused. More tea. Okay, tea. Oh no. Oh no. You wanna add some mug? Don't do it. So, would you recommend the movie? I would recommend the movie and the book. If you want some kick-ass, fun, lady action, great music, fucking see the movie because it was a blast. I had a blast watching it and I would watch it again in a heartbeat. If you are confused by the movie, read the book. If you like a more dry British spy drama, but with, but, not in a novel format, in a graphic format, that you can just pay attention to the drama and not, not to anything too complicated. This is really fun. And I don't say dry in a bad way, like some British dramas are really dry. But for this, it's dry, it's a spy drama. There's no it's, flock of seagulls. There is no flock of seagulls. There's no Depeche Mode. There's no Nina. Not enough. Just no problems. <laughs> This book is good. It is not the same as the movie, but the movie is fucking fun. I think that's it for our coldest city slash atomic blonde. We're gonna try to do one of these a month. Um, next month is September, and I think we are going to do it. I'm going to try my darnest. To You're read gonna it. read it. <laughs> I'm gonna read You're it. You're gonna read it before the new. You're I actually topple that tone. Have you seen the original movie? No, I haven't either. I am going into this so blind. Okay, this is gonna be exciting. You should, have to be the really informed one. Should I watch the original movie too? After yeah, go into it with everything. Okay, so I'm gonna read. Let me go in blind. It, within the next month, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna watch the original. I think it was like a two-part series or something. It? it was fucking long. It was Tim Curry though. Oh, you're right. 
I love Tim Curry. Okay, I'm more excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. Not gonna do a shot? No. Do you want to do a shot? No! <laughs> no, I don't want to do a shot. <sighs> Charlie's Theron, you're a better woman than I. Even though I'm pretty sure all those shots you did were just water. They were probably water. They're pro I mean, you would have gotten shit faced if you did a shot yeah. every fucking take. No. Charlie's Theron, Tweeted us if you actually drank Stoli during those scenes. Please watch our videos, Charlie Sears. I love you. I love you in everything I've ever seen ever. That was Mad Max, but not Mad Max. Who's that character in the? Who was she in Mad Max? Furiosa. Furioso. God, I fucking Furiosa. love that movie. Furioso. Oh, be a man. <laughs> Furiosa. It's Furiosa. Furiosa. Not Furiosa. So drunk and sweaty. <laughs> so catch us next time when we talk about something else. Bye.